Hello, I'm going to be talking about orbital mechanics around small bodies today for my Aero Factory 7 final project. The main three topics here are maneuvering around asteroids. They're very different from a large body. You can have very discontinuous trajectories, as you can see in the background picture that Osiris Rex used. And these discontinuous trajectories actually have very small delta V values because of the gravity field at these asteroids is so small. Then I will talk about stable orbits around asteroids where you don't need any delta V and you will remain in a stable orbit around an asteroid, but they do have a semi-major axis limit. And then I will talk about asteroid ejected trajectories. This is what I worked on in my third summer of planetary resources, so I put a lot of time and thought into it, so I have a bit of insight on that. So we start with the asteroid environment. You're in microgravity. These bodies are much smaller than what you would usually analyze at Earth. So their escape velocities are on the order of centimeters per second, as opposed to when you're on Earth is kilometers per second, which will make a very big difference. The period of these orbits are very large because you're going so small. Even though the radius is small, you're going very slow around these asteroids. They have non-uniform mass distributions. This is not the same as J2. J2 is when you assume you have a spherical body and then it's rotating like the Earth, so it's an oblate spheroid, so the equator is a bit larger than the polar radius. This is not the same thing. The non-uniform mass distribution is the fact that asteroids are mostly rubble piles, so there will be deposits of very large mass and deposits of very low mass. So it's very arbitrary and very, you cannot predict where the big mass will be until you're actually there. And of course, solar radiation pressure, because the gravity is so low, this is a very large factor in how the trajectories work around these asteroids because your gravity is so small that your ratio from gravity to SRP is very much different than as if you are Earth. So how you maneuver around asteroids. You do hyperbolic flyby trajectories, which can be approximated as straight lines. As you can see in the background picture, Osiris-Rex starts in just a basically circular orbit. Then it flips its inclination by 90 degrees, starts coming towards the asteroid, which doesn't actually cause too much delta V because the asteroid body is so small. And then right when it gets to a certain point, it comes in a straight line towards the asteroid and back out. This is because this is the rehearsal phase, the rehearsing the landing. But as you can see, it's a very discontinuous trajectory, but Osiris Rex can get away with it and even do a rehearsal because it does not take that much fuel. It doesn't take that much fuel to do this. So it can do it multiple times and you can reverse your direction in any way as much as you like. And there's a very small delta V, meaning you cannot use a combustion system for your propulsion because they are not precise enough for these values. Propulsion is very good for kilometers per second. It is not accurate for centimeters per second. So as far as Osiris Rex, they use monopropellant hydrazine to control its trajectories. And as you can see, this is a very non-intuitive trajectory as compared to if you only seen analysis for large bodies like the Earth, Moon, and Mars. So I have a simulation of the Rosetta trajectories. As you can see, they're triangular basically trajectories at the beginning because they can afford to do this as the mass is so small. You don't have to follow the basic rules of when you're orbiting a large body because the mass is so small and these maneuvers take very small delta V. They even basically do rectangles. As you can see here, they're doing triangles again. You can do basically a lot more things that you can do at a big body because the delta V does not cost you that much. Terminator orbits. These are inherently stable orbits that you can be around an asteroid without using any delta V. So these are defined as when your angular momentum vector of your orbit is pointed in the direction of the sun vector or directly away. So basically your sun vector is pointed in one direction, your circle is around that direction in the plane perpendicular to that vector. And these are inherently stable but they do have a limit on the semi-major axis because as you can think about it, if you get too far from the body, the SRP is going to be too large as compared to the acceleration due to gravity of the body. So there is a certain bound that you can do this, but they definitely are possible and they have been done before. And we have a simulation here. This is an animation, but as you can see from the European Space Agency, on the left, is an arbitrary orbit that starts in circular and is obviously not very stable because after some amount of orbits it's very much changed and after some more amount of orbits it might exit that orbit 
but on the right is a terminated orbit. And what you see from the not circular values is because of the fact that the body is not a point source of gravity. It has those distributions of mass. So I will give it a little bit of perturbations, but inherently it is a stable orbit. And then we get to asteroid ejecta. So when I worked at Planetary Resources, their design called for a kinetic impactor from the main spacecraft to go ahead and prospect the main body. And I have a quick video here where that missile basically impacted the surface and just spit out a bunch of ejecta in every direction and of every size. And these ejecta, so most of them will have escape velocity because of the fact that, at least for that design, it called for the, basically the missile we'll call it, it called for basically to that to impact the surface around 100 meters per second, where in reality, the escape velocity of the asteroid at the surface is about centimeters per second. So most of them will have escape velocity, but then the rest go into orbit. And then you have to figure out how long are those going to stay there and how long are they going to be a risk to my main spacecraft? So as far as avoidance, contamination to the spacecraft, the large particles could make a dent in your spacecraft and damage electronics and things like that, but the smaller ones could get on your lens and make you be not able to see. So we have three classes of trajectories. One of them is they come out and they fall right back to the surface of the uh, asteroid before one orbit. And those are not dangerous to you. They just go right back. You don't need to worry about them because they're right on the surface. The second class of them have greater than escape velocity. And I say greater because even if you have escape velocity at the surface, you can still go into orbit because of SRP. They have greater than escape velocity and they will leave the sphere of influence. They'll never come back. And these are a concern to you because of the fact that you have to avoid them. You can approximate them as straight lines from the point of impact based on a certain maximum elevation angle from the surface, which is not 90 degrees. Um, that's a planetary science side of question, but when I was there, we confirmed that it's not 90 degrees. It's maybe somewhere between 50 and 70 degrees. That is a maximum angle. So that creates a cone of ejecta that are at escape velocity coming at you. So you have to be inside of that cone based on the point as to where you hit the asteroid. And that is a function, it's just very simple geometry, it's a cone, it's a function of how far you're away from the asteroid as to how far you have to be from that center point and that radius of the cone. And then the third class of ejecta is those that go into orbit, which are the most dangerous ones because you must simulate the trajectories and you have to figure out how long they're going to stay there and how long your spacecraft can just be out there before going back to its no normal operations and just maneuvering around the asteroid before you can get hit by one of these. So I wrote up a simplified simulation, I'm going to restart it, of what I wrote over that summer. So as you can see, I'll play it a few times, most of the ejecta, or a lot of them, just go to escape velocity and they're, they won't be seen again, they're gone. But the ones you have to worry about are the ones that are still lingering now. We're talking on the orders of these say over 100 hours, so we're talking the order of a week and these ejectors just still orbiting the asteroid so you have to figure out how long these are going to stay and how long they're going to be dangerous to you and you have to run Monte Carlo simulations based on the impact to see what kind of ejector you're going to get out and then more Monte Carlo simulations as far as how are these ejectors going to behave once they're out and which one of the problem childs and how likely they are to actually be these ejecta coming out because these are the SRP is very much based on size of the ejecta. We assume these are spheres, so based on the size of the ejecta, the SRP will um, will do more perturbations to them. So in conclusion, trajectories around small bodies are not intuitive compared to large bodies. You cannot use the same type of analysis tools to try to map what you're going to do in an asteroid versus what you're going to do in Earth orbit. These two body assumptions are wildly inaccurate and cannot be used for analysis of small bodies. This is because of the fact that the non-uniform gravity field, which is huge, and the SRP, the ratio of the SRP to the gravity is much greater at an asteroid because they're so small than at Earth. But this also means that mission designers have a lot of freedom in designing orbits and trajectories around small bodies. 
meaning that when you are surveying an asteroid, you can basically do whatever you want. If you know its rotation rate, you know where you want to look, you can absolutely match any trajectory to that. And for any designs calling for kinetic impactors like planetary resources or any touchdown with the body like Osiris Rex using his taxam, you must account for the ejecta if you're worried about any instruments that are at risk for contamination. Thank you.